it's a Star Wars episode! We're all familiar with Star Wars, right? I mean, if you're not, you're probably like an alien or something. But not a Star Wars alien. Obviously. Star Wars is one of the biggest names in science fiction, so of course there's games of it. You'd be hard pressed to find a game system that doesn't have some sort of Star Wars game, probably. And I have quite a few of these games too. So many. But I'm gonna cover this one today. Star Wars The Clone Wars on the GameCube. And no, it's not based on the animated show of the same name. That would be too easy. And not confusing at all! Instead, this is its own self-contained adventure, which just so happens to take place during the Clone Wars. And luckily, it's not based off the movie. <laughs> Since this is a Star Wars game, it'll be no surprise to anyone that LucasArts published this game. But Pandemic Studios developed it, and Pandemic made some pretty good games, so my expectations are high. Like any Star Wars thing, there is a text crawl to get us up to speed. Let's see, okay, Brink of War, uh, Count Dooku, the Sis are the enemy, Clone Army. Okay, so this game starts off during Attacks of the Clones. Oh, but you get to play as Mace fucking Windu. So how does this game play? Well, it's a vehicle shooting shooter game, similar to Freelancer or Bloodwake. You get to run around in a tank and blast things, or at least most of the time, because sometimes you get to fly around in an LAAT gunship. Oh, and then sometimes you're on foot, or a speeder, or a walker. Jumping right in, the first mission has us in a hover tank, and we gotta destroy these power generators. There are turrets, enemy tanks, and droids on speeders, and your tank has these neat little blasters that make the cutest blaster sounds. The controls seem pretty good too. It's a little floaty, but that's probably because you're in a tank. A tank that floats in the air. And it can strafe if you use the trigger buttons, which adds some extra control. Oh, and this tank also has a deflector shield that offers some protection. And when you lose your shields, that's when you start taking damage that needs repair. I think I'm impressed simply because in Star Wars, they don't seem to really have shields very often. Or at least none that seem to do anything significant. That's where you're wrong. And who are you? I'm General Lee Pedantic, and I'm here to set the record straight. Eh? That's right, shields are a very integral part of the Star Wars universe. They're used primarily on Star Destroyers and other capital ships. Oh, and the obvious shield that protects the Death Star in Episode 6. And so? And don't forget the Droidicas in Episode 1! So basically the shields are just arbitrarily placed throughout Star Wars just to make things interesting? No, there's obviously a very decent explanation for it all. Uh, unfortunately, I'm waiting for official canon to reveal that. Yeah. Right. Mission 2 is... Uh, an escort mission? Fuck! Why? But anyway, it isn't too bad, except I lost one of the convoy shuttles because it's just a back and forth and back and forth kind of escort job. You kill what's in front, and stuff appears in the back, and vice versa. Oh, and these shuttles were full of Jedi Knights, apparently. Oops. You just did a great service for the Empire. The Empire doesn't even exist at this point. Oh. Oh, yeah. Mission 3 is where the actual battle for Geonosis happens. Now, I love it when universes get expanded upon, and this battle was literally the best part of Attack of the Clones, so it's awesome to actually play it. Again, we are still playing in Space Windu, and now we get to slice and dice some enemies. There's a basic swish swoosh, and you can throw your lightsaber. And then, you can also use ambiguous force pushing to obliterate a bunch of dudes at once. But, of course, no shields. Shut up! But at least we make our way to the LAAT gunship where we can wreak some havoc. It uses some pretty basic flying controls and has three different weapons. We have blasters that pew 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 rapidly, homing missiles, and my personal favorite, the lasers. It's a constant blast of damage that just drains enemy hit points and also auto locks on the targets. The main issue is it only lasts for a short time and then it needs to recharge. You can blast tanks, spider walkers, and enemy fighters as we have done so far before, 
But now we can also take out these Techno Union ships. <laughs> they look like dicks. And I'm shooting them. <laughs> I'm shooting the sis in the dick. And of course, there's the part where we take out the Trade Federation Spear ships too. Or wait, I don't do that? I have to protect the cannons that actually do? Boo. All right, I think I need to talk about something else because I feel like I'm doing more of a walkthrough than a review. So uh, what else is there? Uh, oh, 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 oh yeah, oh yeah. This game has cutscenes. Granted, most of them are the in-game models and immediately precedes the mission or boss battles, but there are also full motion video. Not like live action, not that kind, but full on motherfucking animated cutscenes, my favorite. It in no way reminds me of Star Trek Shattered Universe, even though this came out two years prior in 2002. Someday. Someday I'll stop complaining about the cutscenes in this game. I think objectively these cutscenes are better, probably because they keep their distance and avoid close face shots. Well, for the most part. Back the fuck off, Anakin! Sheesh! And hey, some of these voices are pretty familiar. I mean, considering it's not the actual original cast, they have pretty decent impressions. Yoda is played by the same guy who does all the Yoda voices for games, Tom Kane. Corey Burton plays Count Dooku. And T.C. Carson as Mace Windu? Why am I finding out only now that Kratos, the god of war himself, plays Mace Windu? And not only here, but in virtually all Star Wars games following this. None shall defy me! I will make you suffer! I am the god of war! Okay, I think I've covered most of the gameplay stuff, minus the story. So, now it's a walkthrough. Sort of. I mean, the story of any Star Wars game is pretty important in my opinion. Unless it's specifically made to not have one, like Star Wars Episode One Racer, Star Wars Chess, or Star Wars Knights of the Republic 2. But Clone Wars seems to have some kind of coherent story attached to it at least. After the Battle of Geonosis, we're no longer playing as Mace Windu, but now we're Anakin. <sighs> Now I'm not slagging off on Hayden Christensen, I think he's a very capable actor, it's just the whiny, angsty version of Anakin bleeds through here. Matt Lucas plays Anakin in this role, and he also plays most of the Anakin Skywalker roles in video games, so he does a fine job emulating Hayden Christensen. He is simply too accurate. Now without going into too much detail, I'll just give a general overview of the story. I think that some people would actually want to play this game and enjoy it for themselves. That didn't stop you with Aiden Chronicles, Blood Wake, or Freelancer. <sighs> I didn't think people wanted to play those games much anymore. Which I was definitely wrong about for Aiden Chronicles. But anyway. The story revolves around finding and stopping Count Dooku from digging up an ancient Sith super weapon that strips the literal life force from living things. Kinda like the crystalline entity from Star Trek TNG. But that's Star Trek. Yes. Yes it is. You rebel nerd. So without ruining the story any more than I usually do, I'll just talk about the bits I found interesting or annoying. You know, just like me. So after Geonosis, Anakin and Obi-Wan are on a planet called Renvar, and the Sis are attacking. So the whole level is trying to evacuate people. This means that you have to fly back and forth as a taxi service, but you're in the lat the whole time, which makes it alright. I found that I ended up blasting more enemies in order to prevent the invasion. I know it's hopeless and the battle is ultimately lost, but it feels like you're stemming the tide. Or at least until you're forced to defend the main base. Then the duo track Dooku to Raxus Prime, which starts off with a speeder chase. It's not terribly hard, but it has its issues. And in fact, if you mess up like three or four times, then it's game over and restarting the mission again. That's kind of annoying. Then it's on to the actual assault, which begs the question. Why not just land the assault force and attack from the beginning? Because you have to scout the enemy first, doy. Fuck it, why don't they just obliterate the site from orbit? How about creating a class of ships that just hyperdrives right into things like planets, ships, and Jar Jar Binks, like a kamikaze capital ship of doom? 
Why not just use the Jedi power to force push the planet into the sun? Who needs limitations? When we confront Dooku on Raxus, he unleashes a boss! Oh, but first Anakin does a thing. Count Dooku, he's here. Anakin, wait! Just listen to that emotion. A plus Oscar winning performance. The boss is a boss and actually kind of tough. Strafing comes in really handy now. So what about Anakin? Well, uh, hmm. He's captured and is set to be a test subject for the Harvester, which is part of that Sith super weapon I mentioned. You can also release all these Wookiees while you make your escape, which is nice, except... Yeah, you have to get on a speeder to escape the reach of the Pink Doom here, but these Wookiees? They are fine on foot? Whatever. Then it's back to Ren Var because the MacGuffin engine, I mean Reaper, which is the name of the Sith super weapon, can only be defeated if Anakin does a correspondence course from an ancient dead Jedi. So the earlier invasion was to prevent that from happening, I guess. Then there's the last assault on the Sith planet that houses the Reaper. But first you have to destroy a planetary shield. Yay! And I like this mission because you get to actually defend a capital ship on the ground, which is interesting. But can someone please explain to me who thought it was a good idea to land in between two already landed enemy ships? Who is running this army? There's also the Imperial March in this level, which makes me feel like... An Imperial hero? Uh, sure. I'm sure that's it. The last three levels are on the ancient Sith homeworld, and this is quite the long sprawl of assaults and flying around and blasting everything upon everything. Oh, and wow, look at the aesthetic of this place. I just love the colors. Wait, is it just me? Or is everyone suddenly looking really hot now? Oh, that's why. Nice. The final boss is like a giant flying saucer. It has pink lights, but why, why pink lights? And a pink beam? What is it? Some kind of fem ray? You get hit with it and oh no, not my masculinity. Oh no, I gotta boost in front of it or else the feminizing ray will turn me into a girl and I can't have that, so... It's actually not so hard. The ghost Jedi guy tells you what to do for each step. And once the Reaper is destroyed, there's a cutscene and Anakin is extra cranky. Do not forget that you are still but a learner. I will keep that in mind, Master. I'm mad because I'm still a boy. And that's Star Wars to Clone Wars. You know, I always thought it was pretty fun, but you know what would make it even more fun? Multiplayer! There is a multiplayer mode to this game as well. There's Deathmatch, of course, and you get to choose from a large variety of vehicles but some of them are locked, which can be unlocked by completing bonus objectives on the missions. There's also a kind of Bunker Wars game where you get to go and capture outposts that continually spawn additional tanks, which attack the enemy base. And that's pretty damn fun, especially if you're playing as the walkers. They have these shields and the AAT's main guns just go boing. It's hilarious. Too bad I don't have any friends to play with. I'll play with you. I said, friends! Oh. Well, no one told me that was gonna be this way. Anyway, the game is fun. Star Wars is fun. Your face is fun. See you next time. Hey there, once again, I'd like to give a shout out of thanks to you all for watching my video. I am really glad that you watched it. So if you liked it, please press that like button, and if you want to see more, please go ahead and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. Thanks again. Bye bye